morning, good morning. We are having an interesting conversation on Black history. And I hate to cut it off, but we are a Black history program and we're going to have a good time next. I'm, a, I'm planning because I want us to have these same questions and discussions because on Black history for our Sunday school hour is going to be Black history of inventors and, and, and people that we're not commonly known and look at the fact that the blacks in America, before we came here on the slave ship and we didn't all come here as slaves either. Okay, let me start by singing, oh, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my life. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my life. In my heart, in my heart, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. In my heart, in my heart, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. In my heart, in my heart, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Alrighty, our scripture reading is going to come from Matthew the 8th, okay, I got the wrong scripture here, Matthew the 8th chapter, I had eight, 18, and we will be reading from verses uh, 18 through 27, Matthew the 8th chapter, starting at the 18th verse, and it is talking about uh, teaching about discipleship. Matthew 8, 18 through 27. And it reads as follows. Now when Jesus saw great multitude about him, he gave commandments to depart to the other side. And a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, The foxes have holes, the birds have at the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my dead my father. But Jesus said unto him, Follow me, and let the bed, dead bury the dead. Verse 20 says, 23, And when he was entered into a ship, the disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, and it so much that the ship was covered with the waves, as but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and woke him up, saying, Lord, Hello. have us, we perish. Save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O oh, ye of little faith? Then he arose and buked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Shall we pray? This morning, our kind, gracious Heavenly Father, Father God, we count it a blessing to be able to come before your throne of grace or come and assemble at, at the house of study to study thee out of that word. And Father God, we thank you, first of all, just waking us up and giving us another day. That is evidence of your love, your grace, and your mercy. You didn't have to do it, but you did it because you loved us and you love us so much. And we thank you. Then, Father God, we pray that as we go throughout the service this morning, there was something to be shared and discussed 
that will grow stronger in their faith in you, closer together as Christian fellows, uh, believers together, believing in one God. And Father God, we just thank you for hearing and answering this prayer. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Okay. Our Sunday school lesson this morning is another look at faith. And if we noticed uh, this uh, this morning, uh, this, this whole entire winter quarter, it's been looking at faith from one perspective of another because it's teaching us our faith in God is what pleases him. Today's lesson, I'm going to touch on it, but I'm going to take us a, a reflective walk back through our winter quarter, starting in December, January, and this is February. And then we, if you can, well, if you don't have the book that I'm studying from, I'm going to hold it up. This is the book that I'm studying from, a National Baptist Commentary. Yeah, we're studying from, which is based on our lessons out of the Bible, based on scriptures from the Bible, is that next and starting in March, we're going to be looking at faith from another perspective. It is going to show us lessons that's going to examine our faith. And I took this approach because two reasons. To say us, well, we'll discuss it hopefully, at the further end is that there is something powerful about faith. And because why would we spend so much time, and I'm not diminishing the time, but on faith, if it's not trying to get us to either have faith, grow in our faith, and live by our faith. Okay. Knowing this fact, that faith is what pleases God. Without faith, you cannot please God. So what I done was this. We're going to walk back these lessons, give a brief overview, and get into this lesson and our main lesson. And, and I, like I said, I'm taking this approach so we can reaffirm our faith. Okay. And, and some of the, and, and, and that our faith God will fight our battle. And we are in some battles, as we were just talking about the systemic racism that we as African Americans still encounter today. We have systemic racism in our financial institutions, in our medical society, in our justice society, in our workplace, and that it's just still going on. Yes, we have made progress, but there's still more progress to be made. But we have to do like some of them old, uh, what I say, heroes and sheroes of African-American descent, or Blacks, if you want to call them, that they didn't give up in the struggle. Our foreparents didn't give up in the struggle because they did not allow that man or our other nationality of belief, of fellow folks uh, to take our faith and our resolve to get from under slavery. Because God didn't make us unequal. He created one race of people and that was the human race. And he created us all equal. It's the scripture says so. So how is it that we are looked at as three-fifths of a person, and that is still on our constitutional books this day? Okay, those are some struggles that we have. To, now, you said, now, you done went off all the way to left field. So I'm talking about faith and how we still have to have faith because the inequality in our lifestyles and our struggles still exist. Okay. Enough of that. Because when I said that, went there because I said, our faith in God, he fights our battles. And we still have battles to fight. That's why I went over there, okay? <laughs> that's, how, that's how I went there. <laughs> and then our faith in God transforms our lives. 
from an unbeliever to a believer. I, faith is, and I want to make this point, and I hope I can get it all done before 10 o'clock, that it, that word faith, that, that, that's, that, that commodity of faith that we are uh, commanded to have is so powerful that it does a lot. It really does. Okay. And it causes us to live in a holy union with God because we have to first accept him and as who he is and his sovereign power. Okay. Now, I'm putting all these points up here, and I'm going to show you just how our faith and how it done. Our faith, it is our faith that it saves us from eternal separation from God. We're going somewhere when we leave this earth, okay? Whether we are, whether our faith don't determine whether we spend eternity with in the presence of God or down in the with hell with Satan. Okay, and I feel like this, and you may have heard me say this before. I'm already living in hell. I don't have to leave this body to go further and continue the rest of my eternal days in hell. That's just too much for me. I want something a little better. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, so in unit one, we looked at the different peoples who had demonstrated their faith and we started with the faith of Ruth. You know, she was the daughter-in-law of Naomi. She was a Moabite woman, okay? And because of Naomi's faith and her witnessing her through her lifestyle, Ruth be, accepted her God and left her family, her inherited family behind and went back to Jerusalem with Naomi and allowed, said, God, I'm going to serve your God. That was faith. And it speaks to the, 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 the lifestyle of a Christian believer, her mother-in-law, all right? Also in that unit, it profiled the faith of David when he was facing a formidable giant on behalf of his people. He took three rocks, one for the father, one for the son, and one for the Holy Spirit, and his slingshot, and killed this giant who was dressed in such body armor that it was hard to get through. But by him, his faith in the one true God, he showed him the right spot where there was no body armor and killed Goliath. And what that says is, when our faith in God, there is no foe that our enemy that we can face where we will not be victorious. Faith in God. Okay. Then uh, the other part of that, we looked at a family of faith based on Joseph and that fast, uh, family line. They were faithful people. Even now, let me say this. There were uh, some instances or incidents of sinful acts, but when they repented, God forgave. What that shows is that, yes, we are imperfect people, even though we are believers in God, because we're still living in a sinful world that where we're going to be tempted and smite or be fall prey to Satan in his masterful disguise. But when we can recognize our sin and turn back to God, he will forgive us. And that's what he go, He did. Now, let me say this. There's only one sin that's unforgivable, blasphemy. Okay? Now, then the other person we looked at in faith was Elizabeth and Mary. Both of those women had the faith enough that and the God gave them an each a son, and they were to bring forth. Mary is the mother of Jesus. Elizabeth is the mother of John, who is the forerunner of Jesus Christ. They both was, uh, Mary was a young girl. Elizabeth was an older one, a woman, past her childbearing years, but she had faith she and her husband, a uh, Zachariah, 
that believe God, God moves in his time to uh, uh, fulfill his purpose for every one of us in our lives. Okay, all right? Now, so they did, and they did what they, they, they accomplished, God accomplished through them his desired plan. And the first exact thing we want to look at this uh, is the three wise men who traveled great distance to worship Jesus. And the one thing we discovered out of that, that should not be too great a distance for us to travel to worship God. And now with all of this technology, there should not be any uh, out of the house of worship. Okay? We don't have to travel by foot or on donkey to get to a house of worship. We don't even have to use a wagon like they did back in the 40s and the 50s or even earlier than that to get to the house of worship. I'm just trying to make a point here of how God has removed so many of our obstacles for us to get to the house of worship and yet we still Many, I mean to rephrase it, many is not taking the time of recognizing the importance of worshiping God. Okay. That's going to be a day of reckoning, though. Uh, okay. All right. And unit two, we learn about faith, its righteousness, where we are reaffirm our understanding of just how faith is, what it is, how it leads to us in righteousness. And we took note of some of the Old Testament I mean, prophets uh, that who lived by faith and their faith was counted as them for righteousness. Abraham is one. Noah was one. Enoch, uh, yeah, was one. And it just goes on that they live by faith. And I, if I can go back and without going off on a tangent, this goes, it, it, it really works me up how we as black folks are being treated. Those people had faith. And if you ever interview, if you haven't watched the black church on PBS, I ask you to do so because it's so enlightening how the black church in the community was the go-to station. If you needed some food, you went to the church. If you needed a job, you went to the church. When you certainly, if you needed prayer, you went to the church. So we're getting, the it's church have always been a staple in the black community. Yes. Because those people lived by faith. They would live the Bible. They would talk the Bible. And many of you heard me say those different sayings of what my mother taught me was biblically based. And a lot of them had a less education than we do today. But they lived by faith because they knew the Bible was God's written word and they believed him and they lived it. Okay. All right. Then we talked about faith and trust that we must always trust God and supposed to lean into our little knowledge and understanding about things. And I always said, and I said this last night, that you will do better when you put God first in everything. We wasn't put here. God didn't create us to be independent of our own selves. We are to be dependent upon God. We depend on him. Because every breath we take comes from God. Right. That's right. If we couldn't breathe, if he didn't allow us to, how, mm -hmm. how absent-minded are we, are all of those who feel like, I can do this by myself. I don't have to have God. And I just look at him and shake my head. So that's what we learn out of that. Then... We talked about faith and encouragement. And it to use the King Jehoshaphat out of Second Chronicles, verse 20, and how he had the, the wisdom 
to go to God in prayer because militarily he was outnumbered when he had those two nations to fight against. But he took and went to the one person, the one man that he knew was fighting his battles and he would be successful in the power of prayer and believed in that prayer. When we pray, we have to believe in our prayer. That's mm -hmm. what Je King Jehoshaphat did. When he went down on his knees and prayed, and God answered and said, and told him this, said, this is not your battle. This is not your fight. This is mine. But I want you to get up in the morning and go down and keep marching on as if you're going to fight the fight. But know the fact that I've already won the fight battle for you. And mm -hmm. sure enough, when he got the word God told him, those people were already dead. Mm -hmm. God will fight your battle. You must use and act in faith. When we pray to God about something, we got to believe in our prayers. I know you've heard me say this. Prayer and worry don't mix. When you pray and then continue the word, they're telling God, you don't believe what you just asked me to do. You don't believe I asked you to do it. That I'm big enough to do what you asked me <laughs> mean to do. <laughs> but he is. <laughs> okay. Ah, then we looked at the transforming effects of faith. Okay. And how it transformed our lives. And how it started with us believing that there is a God. That we were created in his image. He's all powerful. And he's all knowing and he's everywhere. Okay. That's what that lesson brought us to. And his power is unlimited. And I'm going to bring this in. I, I, we don't want him, to, I want him to ask us. Where were you when I hung the stars in the sky? Where were you? Since you know so much. Where were you? I'm just saying. I wouldn't want him to ask me. So <laughs> I just <laughs> I don't want him to ask me that. Okay. Then uh we looked at faith, uh our faith in the midst of fiery furnace. And it used the Hebrew boys. That was uh, that is that's a popular story, as it is, is today's story is a popular story that everybody has read. But who this tells us. In this life, we're going to have some fiery furnished days. We're going to have some lion den days. But like those Hebrew boys, they refused to bow down to idol God. Just like Daniel, he refused to bow down. And he told them, I don't care what you do to me, I'm not going to bow to your God. We're in that same situation today. There was society is trying to make us bow down to their God of accepting his homosexuality and all of that stuff. And we can say the government is acting as a king and we just, many of the churches is accepting it and saying that the Bible said it's okay. I know we went in depth in that, but it's not okay. And I, do I hate those people? No, because they were still created in the image of God like I was. But I do not have to like their lifestyle. I'm not going to bow down to it. And I don't care what the government says. And I'm not going to perform a marriage, no marriage for two same-sex people. Do I will be bowing down to what the what government want me to do? I'm not going to do that. If they want to put me in jail, send me something to read, y'all. Just send me something to read, because no, that's where I'm at. For that. <laughs> for that. <laughs> for that. <laughs> okay. Now, mm -hmm. uh, and I know I said this before. A lot of denominations have split because the parent body is accepting that as biblically correct. It is not. We're going to have the faith to do like the Hebrew boys and Daniel and say, if you want to put me in the fiery furnace, if you want to put me over there with the lion, 
then have at it because I'm going to stand on God. And the one thing I want, they had faith in God. They would focus on their problem. They focused on God. Because each out of each of them, King Nebuchadnezzar, after those boys was not heard, he became a worshiper of the one true God. So did King Darius, who had Daniel put in the lion den. He went to the lion den the next morning. No, he would find David eaten by the lion. Instead, David and the lion laying up there sleep together. <laughs> 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 another motivation to the for for us having faith okay right. and these lesson really has pointed out faith and how we should have faith and it give us different examples how those who trusted and had that unwavering faith they were successful there is no failure in God at all and we must learn to uh, to to uh, trust him regardless of what it is. And I, I know you have heard me say, we have Christian sisters and brothers over in foreign countries who is being persecuted this day for their faith in God. They, and I'm constantly getting emails for even pastors has been put in jail. Some of them are being bodily harmed for trusting in God, and I know you've heard me say this, that uh, we need to be careful in this country. It's right before our eyes every day. When you mm -hmm. pick up the news, you listen to the news, you hear it. where Mr. Trump is already telling you what he's going to do. He don't care nothing about worshiping God. Anytime somebody talking about two Corinthians and two to Peter and take the Bible and hold it upside down, what does he know about God? <laughs> and all of you of us who know God <laughs> got to believe in our prayers when he asked when we ask God to keep him sitting somewhere else other than in the White House and pray for those in the White House that they find God if they don't know him. They get to know him. Now that's my prayer. Okay. So our next week's lesson would be uh, our faith in God's purpose. And that was coming out of an Old Testament prophet called Habakkuk 2 and verses 1 through 5. And, I, and we're going to get through this. It provides us, in that lesson, the nuts and bolts of it, provides us encouragement that we must wait on God and his time. See, we have this microwave mentality, this instantaneous mentality. We want God to just jump and move it at our early, whenever we ask him. God may not be his time to move right then. He might take and have us, and he know where our faith, the extent of our faith, and he want to grow it to be more dependent upon him that he'll let things run on because it's not his time to move. But we get so impatient that we want God to do it when we ask him for it. That's like he's an ecclesiastical bellhop. You know, we call him when the bell the, at the hot hotel, the guy come and see what we want. God hears us. He know we're coming before he, we get to him. But he want us to hear, humble ourselves and ask him. Yeah, Rebecca went to him and was asking him about the situation. He told Rebecca, now you just going on back up to the bed, to the watchtower and watch and pray because I am going to do what I know is best, but it's going to be in my turn. And he did. He delivered Israel out of bondage, but it was a 70 year process because Israel had to turn back to God and repent and keep believing that God was going to deliver that's that's what that's what that is about. Okay. Then the other purpose is him prolonging or delaying is to bring us into a close relationship with him. Sometimes God has to give us a wake up call through hardships. 
Have you ever looked at your hardships as being a wake-up call that I got to get and learn to trust God? When you get in those, as I call them, fiery furnace or Red Sea days or Daniel Lion Den days, and you can't get yourself out, when we can't get ourselves out, who do we call on? And we have to do nothing but wait on God and keep believing in him and his timing for our deliverance. That's what he's telling us to do. We has, God has a purpose and our trials. He wants us to have a closer relationship with him. Listen, I had this note here. God is giving us a wake-up call right now in our political system. He really is. He's, he's showing us the magnitude of corruption in our political system. And for as we as Christians, we have to see who we're putting in office. Ask a bit, what are your faith? What is your belief system? What are you going to try and do to help better my life? Uh, it's on display, full display. And the news media uh, make us think that we are doomed. And that's works of Satan. If we are believers in Christ, we can shout hallelujah because victory is ours. God is not going to allow his people, when we truly believe in him and trust him, yeah, we're going to have to suffer some, that's, that's no doubt. Because if you look at all this crazy nonsense, we can get have anxiety attacks, but we have to go to God and say, oh, Lord, you let me focus on you. Help me to focus on you. I'm praying for the right thing to do, okay? All right. And if you ask this question, and then y'all can chime in. Now, I made my speech. What did this lesson, these lessons has taught us about our faith? What has it taught us? Um, my personal view, mm -hmm. it's not our timing. It's God's timing. He sees it fit. He sees everything. We just have to have patience and have faith and wait on him. Okay. And a lot of well, they want it now, like you said, you know, microwave, McDonald's, make it your way real quick. Mm -hmm. Where is the passion? He takes our time with us for us to try to see what he's trying to teach us as well. That's right. Rats with ourselves. Mm -hmm. I agree. You agree? All righty. Well, okay. That's good. Those are good comments. Because he wants us to see things from his perspective. He wants us to have that unwavering and unconditional yeah. faith in him. And if he can do anything but fail, then why not trust him? Absolutely. Why not trust him? And if I had to get in the mind of Daniel and the Hebrew boys, that was their attitude. I'm going to trust him. And matter of fact, it's in that scripture where they told, the Hebrew boys told Nebuchadnezzar, listen, we know our God came. It may not be his will to save us from the fiery furnace, but we still not going to bow down to your God. And that's what we got to tell society today. We know God can. And if he doesn't, then it's not his will, but I'm still not going to bow down to your God. Mm -hmm. Yep. You can take my life, but you can't take my soul. God gave me that. And if he allowed you to take my life, he's going to take his soul. And I still will not have bowed down to your God. That's what we as Christians got to tell society today. With its corruption, and that we are not going to bow down to your God. We're just not going to do that. And no shape, form, or fashion. We are not going to bow to your God. Nor law. Exactly. 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 And I can tell you one that we, and I'll say especially seniors, but all of us, 
is this high insurance. Mm -hmm. It is breaking us over the cold. And who's getting rich is the companies and the lawyers. That's right. The companies and the lawyers. It's terrible. Right. And greed is their God. That's right. We have to stand and fight and take God in the fight with us. And the Lord, you see this. And the other, I was mentioning this, and then we're going to move on. That the taxes, property taxes, that seniors are being saddled with. If I was a senior living in, in Detroit, I'd be sitting up down in the courthouse uh, and the tax office. You won't give me a tax abatement on these taxes. There's no way I should be paying $7,000 a year in tax and property tax. <laughs> It's just no way. But if the seniors don't stand up and go and fight for that benefit, they, they're not going to come and tell you. No. I'm no. A, <laughs> I'm, they're not. I ain't, they're have, not. I ain't had no visitors. You ain't have any visitors? And mm -hmm. guess what? When you wake up tomorrow and this time next week, you still won't have no visitors. Say, I'm going to reduce your taxes. Okay. All right, that's what they're gonna tell you. They're, I'm, they're not gonna be there, so don't hold your breath. <laughs> okay, if that's being said, let us uh let me close with prayer and then we go right on into our Sunday school, our worship service. Lord Father God, we just thank you for everything that you do, has done, and will continue to do in our life. And then, Father God, I thank you for enlightening us on the importance of faith in our life. As faith is what pleases you. And Father God, I thank you for giving us the strength to walk by faith. As this Christian journey is a faith walk, but you are there with us, walking beside us, and will never leave us nor forsake you. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. All right. Let's just keep on moving here. I'm going to try and do this song. Victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind, victory today is mine, victory is mine, victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Joy is mine. Joy is mine. Joy today is mine. I told Satan. Get thee behind, our joy today is mine, happiness is mine, happiness is mine, happiness today is mine, I told Satan, get thee behind, happiness today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, victory is mine. All right. Amen, amen, amen. Sister Serbo? Oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. My apologies. Okay. Um, pick a please bear with me. I'm gonna get this down packed, Pastor. I surely will. Okay, let's see. Uh, let me see. Losing my voice here. Uh. 
Psalms 23 is good. If you got it. Or you got one. Uh, let me see. Dead files. You want me to do Psalm 23? Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Psalms 23. Verse 1 through 6, because it's short. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of the righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the shadow valley of death, I'll fear no evil, for you are with me. And rod and that staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and the mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you for another day. We thank you for this day because it is a day that we have never seen before. And at the end of this day, it will be a day that we will never see again. And Father God, we thank you for it. And Father, we thank you for giving us the ability, the strength, and the will to live this day to the fullest, glorifying the righteousness of your son Jesus in our lives for the world to see that there is a God and he is righteous, he is love, and you are compassionate. And Father God, we just thank you for going with us throughout the service. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father <laughs> and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into a covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, we engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship ordinances, disciplines, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to support of the ministry, the expense of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel to all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportments, to avoid all tattletaling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drink as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feelings and courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior, to secure without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church, where we can carry out the spirit of the covenant and the principles of God's word. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, we are moving right along. We're moving right along. We um at the point where almost at our altar prayer. And let me say this: next week our Sunday school lesson, our Sunday school. I will be devoted to Black history, okay? And I, I'm going to try and present some facts that we don't readily know about our Black history. And to about one thing we'll find out that there were Blacks in America before the slave ship. There were Blacks in America before Columbus, okay? And we're going to look at some Blacks who have made an inroad into our struggle for equality and freedom 
that we don't always hear about. And it just Servo and, and Ms. Kate had brought some I some things that is worth repeating next week that you all can say that uh that we has uh, that have made great contributions to the making of America. And um, I, I would like somebody to volunteer this look of some of those old Negro hymn songs. Go Down Moses is one of them, that we don't sing in the church anymore. I could find it to play, but then YouTube blocks my service because so many other countries that watches this service, uh, they don't want they don't want to see it. They don't want to know all about those different songs. And if, and I tell them up front, I don't have the rights, I don't own the rights to these songs. But it's just a church song that we are playing and worshiping, but they still block it. Okay. I had to go back from last month's second Sunday and mm -hmm. try to delete the songs that were being played that I've already told them that we're not claiming the right to the song. I told you that if I play. But that's the challenge. Um, and, and I'm going to say this as we were talking about the inequality before we started recording of the Blacks that we have in this country and the different systemic racism that still is plaguing us in this country. We've even elected a Black president and what did it, that didn't move the needle too much. Mm -mm. But, you know, we cannot forget our history and we have to keep those of us who value our history, have to keep teaching it because so many of our young people don't want to hear about our, our history. Mm -hmm. That was back in the day. It, it, it It's a version of it. It's right here today. Absolutely. And we all going to eat face it some way, some form or the other of systemic racism. And I'm on and I know we all know the answer to this, but I asked a question then and I ask a question now. What makes them think that they are better than us? <laughs> <laughs> what makes them think? You know we breathe the same air. We walk yeah. on the same dirty ground. Mm -hmm. Included areas. I'm still trying to see the difference to myself. Okay. So that's the thing I want our young people to understand. And when we have to teach Black our history, uh, so if, whether they want to hear it or not, because I would hate to see them and back in total slavery. But when they see I, the difference between now and then, I, my, our forepants' mind was free. They're using drugs, there's mind altering drugs to keep our minds focused on the things that will have no lifetime value. I'm not knocking or gaining material wealth at all. Okay, I agree, right. But make sure you have your priorities straight. And I urge encourage everybody, if you can buy a house or some land, do so. And, and and this is, and I'll say this again, I said it in Sunday school, the late Irma Henderson, I was a member of a Women's Conference of Concern, and they were just beginning to move Blacks out of the city and making it enticing for them to leave the city because it's not going to be, it's going to be crime written, it's going to be this and it's going to be that. And we wasn't going to be able to get back into it. And that is happening today. She told us, if you have nothing but a toilet stool, sit on it, keep it, don't give it away. Because when they move you out, you will not be able to get back. We we'll see all of the new development that's going on. And we it, and they call it low income, and it's starting at $1,400 a month, a house, a low income house apartment for rent. And it's not as big as this house. So who is it for? If you if there's some people who get six seven hundred dollars or even fourteen or two thousand dollars a month and social security or your income and you go pay fourteen hundred dollars a month in rent, what do you got to live on? Six hundred dollars when groceries are still going up, mm -hmm. your utility bills are still going up. 
So no, they're not building it for low that income. All that high insurance. At the, the, right. So those are some of the things that we have to see that we are still being pushed out. And we have to stand up and sit at the front of the bus and tell them like Rosa Parks, I'm not moving. Yes. Okay. I'm not moving. That's a proverbial bus to tell them I'm not moving. Wherever I'm living in the city of Detroit, I'm going to keep it up. I'm going to make it nice. And you can't buy it from me. Okay. That's where I feel. That's right. Then I'm going to sit here Right here on Ward Street. Oh. Huh? <laughs> right here on Ward Street. Rock. Yeah, that's right. They sit right there on your porch and rock. Uh, and watch the <laughs> car go by. That's right. Sit there. Don't move. Okay. All right. We got all that said out the way. Uh, two things. That's Next Sunday is going to be our Black History Month. That's going to be Sunday school. And if you are, I do want somebody to volunteer to bring uh, just, uh, you don't have to sing them. If you want to sing one, sing one. But uh, uh, some old Negro spirituals, they out there on the internet, look them up. And if you have another character or somebody you want to bring relating to hey, Black history, do that. I don't know what my sermon is going to be. Might be talking about our heritage. I did that last year. But we do have one. And we might as well be proud of it. And look at where we come from and where we're going. And we don't want to repeat the same thing that we come out of. But you don't, if you you will, if you don't know where you come from. Okay? All right. Uh, Pastor, I have one name for the prayer list. Yes. Uh, Anthony Turner. He went to sleep smoking a cigarette and caught a fire. Oh, geez. Oh. And now he's downtown in the medical center in the hospital just burned over mm -hmm. a large, large percent of his body. Mm. I just pray for him. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. Anybody else? All righty. Well, yes? Just pray for our um congregation members, you know, for their blessings of their home, their health and strength, Pastor. Yeah. Yeah, they got some growth to do. Okay. All right. Shall we pray? Oh, I wanted that. We need to start working on our anniversary. I do have a topic, I think, and hopefully you agree. It is fulfill the church fulfilling the mission of the church, fulfilling the mission of the church. The church is supposed to make disciples. That's our mission. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Go and witness. All right? Okay. And we still believe in God for us appealing this, this year. Okay. All right. It's the things I want to do, but I'm like so many other pastors. I need the volunteers. I need help to get it done. I would like to have a, a fellowship outreach in May. But I need help. Okay. Let us just tell God about it, too. All right. Shall we pray? Father God, our Father. And our Lord, Father, we come before your throne of grace. Father, we come as humble as we know how to say thank you, first of all, because of your goodness, your love, your grace, and your mercy. And second of all, you ask us to bring all of our cares to you and leave them at your feet. And Father, there's many. There's many cares and concerns that I want to lift up today. And the list is long. 
And we want to just lift up all of our sick and shut in. That's a new name that's been brought to us. Mr. Turner, who's hospitalized from with burns over most of his body. And it, whatever the reason it happened, Father, you are a good God. You are a sovereign God. And you are a God who respects, uh, has no respect of person. And healing one, you will certainly heal another. And Father God, we thank you for touching the sick, the shut in, the hospitalized, the bereaved this morning, as only you can. That's uh, Brother Wilmore, Deacon Hunter, uh, Sister Bowman, and Sister Payne, and Brother Kendrick, Sister Simmons, Brother Hooper, Bowman, McClaver, McKay, Water, Armstrong, Pugh, Sister Burnside. And Father, we're just asking you to touch right now. Sister Griffin, Father, these are all your people, as, as we all are. And then, Father God, there's so many that is suffering a need your comfort and touch for whatever reason it is our peace has been disrupted if it's no more than uh getting bombarded or being bombarded with the negativity uh the adversity and the evilness that's going on in our society today father touch our spirit comfort us and those who have lost loved ones Comfort them, Father, as you are true to your word when you said you will never leave nor forsake us. And we thank you. We thank you, Father. And Father God, I, I just ask that you touch the uh, families, whatever is out of order in the family. Father, we ask that, that you to bring it back in harmony and unity as only you can. And then, Father God, we're asking that you touch each member that they will turn to you in faith and knowing that you are the sovereign God and look to you for the resolution for whatever is going on because you are a problem solver. You are the one true doctor. You are the sovereign attorney and you are mighty counselor. Father, you are all of the need when we have you. And we is who call on you. You are faithful to hear and to answer our prayer. And Father God, I'm asking for to touch the co-workers and our workplaces. Remove all of the hostility that's going on in our workplaces. This is the work of Satan, not of you. And then Father, even just as it is in the family that have caused disunity in the family. Father, bring us all back together in a unified manner and to serve you and be uh, because, and emulate the Godhead because there is no dysfunctional in the Godhead. The Godhead will operate in a unified manner with each of, uh, member of the Godhead performing his assigned duty. And Father, we thank you. And Father God, I'm asking you just go behind the prison walls this morning. Yes, Lord. And touch them. Touch their hearts. And let them repent and turn back to you, Father. Keep your protection around them, Father. And live, let them live a life of faith and not get caught up in the corrupt culture and that prison wall. Because it's not of you. And then, Father God, I, I ask you to just touch them all. Then, Father God, I'm asking you to go with our truck drivers as they're out there on their road, facing whatever it is, so much. It's not If it's not the weather, it's the evilness of mankind. As they are trying to provide a valuable service of bringing goods to the consumer. Father, we ask for your touch right now. Touch right now. And then, Father God, we're asking for your touch of our families, our babies, as they are being victimized one way or the other. So many are lost, so many are missing, are being captured, 
by the evil people that's evil in their hearts. And Father, we, we just thank you for your protection. And I'm asking for that when you when the, the evil one come to harm those babies, that they will see your angels around each and every one. Of us. each we have angels that you have dispatched around us and for our protection. And we are calling on for them right now. And Father God, I, I'm, I'm asking to bring peace in those war-torn countries where there is no peace. Father, they need to turn to you. And I'm asking that you touch their hearts. And Father God, do not forget this country and touch the hearts and the minds of every one of us. You know the extent of what we need. If our faith need increasing, our peace need to be restored in you, Father, you are capable of doing all that. And then, Father God, this nation really needs to hear from you. We need a spiritual reawakening. And, Father God, I don't want to forget our fellow Christian sisters and brothers in foreign countries or wherever they are that is being persecuted for their faith in you. Father, we knew these days, you knew these days were coming. But Father God, I ask you just continue to protect them as they're demonstrating their faith. And a lot of them are experiencing those Daniel days or those fiery furnished days that they're having to sacrifice their life, but refusing to bow down to idol gods. And Father God, I'm asking for everybody in this church and who's listening will take that same, and all of our Christians to take that same attitude in this church and said, I'm not going to bow down to no idol gods. I'm going to put you first in my life. And every worship day, I'm going to make my way out to the house of worship. Then, Father God, I ask you to just touch each and every one of us too, individually and touch this church collectively. Father, we are trying to stand firm on your word. And I thank you for using me as your chosen vessel to be the leader of the under shepherd of this congregation. Then lastly, Father God, we ask that you, I'm asking that you just speak through me as I bring what you have provided me with to encourage our people to wait on you. And Father, it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Okay. Our message today is Wait on God, regardless of what, just wait on God. My scripture text coming out of Psalms 27, verses 13 through 14, and reading from the King James Bible, it reads as follows. I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord and the land of the living. Verse 14 says, Wait on God, on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Listen, and I, 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 if I had to try and get in the mind of God, when I ask him, what does he want me to talk about? But he said, wait on God. He wants to encourage us all. Since we have talked about faith, this end starting in January up and through today, about faith, 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 and how it is biblical, it is paramount in our Christian walk and belief. So, if I, as I say, if I had to get in that mind, he wants us not only to have faith in him, but to wait on him. And in waiting on him, we are demonstrating our faith and trust in God. So we want to look at it from this perspective. How do faith play a part in our waiting on him? And what does it mean for us to wait on God? What does it mean for us to wait? So let's just say this. Let me say this. Faith, as I just stated it, without saying it, is crucial. It is paramount. In our Christian walk, because it causes us to see God 
with our spiritual eyes as if he was standing before us as a natural human being. That's what faith will do for us. It will cause us to believe, number one, that there is a sovereign God who saves everybody who believed in his son, Jesus Christ. That's what faith will do for you. Listen. We will also recognize that faith is our faith in God will transform our lives from an unbelieving, wretched sinner to a saved sinner saved by God's grace through our faith in Jesus Christ. We are talking about what place a part faith plays in our lives. Faith is 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 uh, uh, absolutely impossible for us to get around having faith. It causes us not only to believe, but we have the ability to wait on God and His timing to remove or to act in an adverse situation that we are sure to encounter in this sin-riddled world. Nothing but faith. And as our scripture tells us, the first verse, unless we have the faith and to wait on God, we were going to faint, we're going to give up, and we will not be able to see God's goodness in the land of the living. Let me say it this way. Or let me just point out something to you. All those who was waiting, there was many who was waiting to see God fulfill his promise of sending the Savior, who was his son, Jesus Christ, into the world. Many of them died before they could see that full fear, but they still had hope that he was going to send. God fulfilled his promise. And just as he fulfilled that promise, he fulfilled every other promise he made to you and I, to humanity. When he tells us, I will Supply all of your needs. And I know we've had heard me say this before. We, any of us cannot name something that we need that we do not have what God had to supply. He, he supplies everything we need. And that's worth us to recognize and say, Lord, thank you. Because we had faith in him, we believed in him, and we can wait on him in his time. And we can we we also have that faith to know and to believe and to be confident, regardless of what situation I am, and I'll have to re-reference re -reference those fiery furnace kind of days that we get into, those Daniel kind of days that we get into. Of those Red Sea days when we see things, as we see all of this in front of us and we don't know how we're going to get out of it. But when we call on God and prayer and faith, believing that he has the power to do, open up our Red Sea, move our waters out of our Red Sea and let us cross over on the side of safety where our peace will be restored. Our joy in him will be there. And we can say, Lord, you delivered me again. And say, thank you. Yes, let me say this. What we else we do know about waiting on God is that whatever adversity we find ourselves in and we're going to encounter because we're living in this sinful world, that God works things out for our good. Because if it's no more than to teach us a lesson of, of trusting him and waiting on him, what we do know is that God's time is not our time. God's time is one day, one day in God's time, 
is like a thousand years in man's time. Even though some of us is 80 to 100 years old, we still have not have lived a whole day in God's time. And in that lifetime of our span of our lifetime, we're going to encounter some, some, some adversities. But when we can take them to God in faith, prayer, because he tells us, I want you to bring me your problems. I'll take care of it. Now listen, God is not a liar. When he tells you to bring them, that is what he wants you to do. Because you're showing trust in him, faith in him, and confidence. Because he has proven himself time and time again to be trustworthy. Whatever he says, it is going to come to pass. Okay? So, listen. Trust him. And yes, and as the other part of our scripture tells us, as we are waiting on God, he strengthened our hearts. Give us the strength. So in this Christian journey, we can keep moving on and not faint. He gives us that strength. We ever Have you ever accounted a time in your life to seem like, I just cannot move another step. I cannot make another inch. And then somehow when we call on God, we get refreshed with a new amount of energy and strength. Where did it come from? Nobody but God. God is our inner strength. He is the source of our strength. Just as he is the source of our total being. So, yes, when we can call on God and be willing to wait on him and not tell him, Lord, I want you to do this for me right now. And just ask him to do what you want him to do. And don't tell him how to fix it. Because if you knew how to fix it, you would done fix it and wouldn't be in it in the first place. You wouldn't have ever got in this situation. <laughs> so <laughs> just wait on him. Trust him. That's all we're trying to say. Just wait on God. Because what his timing is perfect. I know we've already heard this song and this phrase that God is never late. He is an on-time God. Now think back now. We've already said a thousand years in man's time is as one day in God's time. And whatever we are going through is only going to take a minute for God to fix your problem. Just be patient. Trust him in knowing that he's going to fix it. It all comes back to our faith in him and our ability or our belief, or our willingness to let him fix that problem. Whenever his time comes, goes and ask him, to, Lord, teach me what you're trying to teach me through these adverse times. He'll certainly bring it to you. Because God wants us to know him, be in a relationship with him, and he does not want us to live a life of misery and confused because that is not of him. God is a God of love. He's a God of peace. He's a God of compassion. And now we must remember, don't forget who we are. We are his prized creation. Yeah, believers are the apples of God's eye. And guess what? We know we have our children and we just be so proud of them when they do that. Oh, he's the apple of our eye. We are the apple of God's eye. And he loves us unconditionally. He has proved it time and time again. And the most he done when he proved, he really proved it when he stepped out and gave his only son to be man's perpetuator on the cross of Calvary. There was no bigger demonstration of God's love. And all he asked us to do is to have faith. And if we're well, we weak in our faith, he will give us that extra strength to be have faith. Okay. Let me say this. Then I'm trying to move on to another point. Our waiting on God. He's going to manifest his goodness in our life. Because we're going to have that unwavering faith that's going to enable us to wait on God in his time as we're going to develop 
an intimate relationship with him, which is what he wanted in the first place. Because we were created to be having an intimate relationship with God. But sin broke that. Jesus restored it. Just wait on. Okay. Let me go to, let us look at Psalms 37 and 34, which in, encourages us to wait on God by saying this. Wait on God and keep his ways, and he, the Lord our God, shall exhort us to inherit the land when even the wicked is going to be cut off. We, we who are his children, can wait on him and keep his ways. We are keeping our focus on him instead of the foolishness that's going on in the world. He's saying to you right here in the scripture, I want you to keep my way. Don't worry about these other folks, the world and its gun godliness. And it goes back to what we were talking about. I don't bow down to no idol God. You're not going to worship Satan. I am the one who created you. I am the one who sustains you. I am the one who provides for all of your needs. Satan is come to destroy everything that you have that I provided with you. So I want you to stay focused on me. Obey my laws and my statutes. I want you to love me with your total being. And then I want you to love your fellow man. So now all of them is not going to be my children, but I loved you when you didn't love me. So let's love them. If they don't return their love, just love them anyway. I'll give you the strength to do that. Okay? Listen. And he tells us this. That's the hope of the curtain. He said, now listen. You come wait on me. Focus on me. All these wicked folks that's cutting up and wrecking habit in our society is going to soon be cut off. And I'm going to put them in the lake of fire. We know God does not lie. When he tells us, you can focus on me. I want you to do that. Not fool with Satan. Because they're going to be gone in a minute. And you'll be running around looking for them and you won't see them. Because I have just dropped them off over there in the lake of fire. I want you to do is focus on me. Keep my ways. And live according as I have commanded thee. This is an assured hope from God when he tells us, you just stay, stay focused on me. That's what I want you to do. Don't worry about the world, because I got it. It might want you to think that I'm no longer in control, but I am. And in my time, I am born to put it under my feet. And it's going to be destroyed forever. And if you need something else to do, I want you to take a look at Psalm 37 and say, when he tells, the Lord tells us, I want you to rest in the Lord. I want you to pay, wait patiently for me. Don't get yourself all worked up because those wicked people seem as though that they are gaining more, they're being prosperous and they're just, doing that they're all powerful. Don't buy into that foolishness. I am God, and I'm God all by myself. I want you to just rest in me. I want you to keep your focus on me. Because I got it. But in my time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to destroy the wicked. And he says, and then... And that is going to happen. He tells us time and time again. He's reassuring us that if you keep your focus on me, find your rest in me because I got you. I'm rocking you in my arms, my safety. This is, I want you to look at Job. How I allowed, notice this word, I allowed Satan to afflict him. But I told Satan, you cannot touch his soul. Are you, any, are you any different from Job? Job was my people just as you are. Did I, would I not uh, take care of you just like I took care of Job? Satan is never, it will never be more powerful than me, God. I'm all powerful. I was there 
for there was a wind or a way. Satan what? So why would you put your trust in Satan? Why would you focus on him and his foolishness? As God is telling us, I want you to focus on me. And I want you to have the faith and the confidence enough in me. So whatever is going on, just trust me. Obey my laws. Don't continue to be a contributor of the sinful condition by disobeying my, or be a part of the solution by trusting me, living for me, and in holy union with me. I'll be finished in a minute. Listen, he tells us this, that all of us who wait on the Lord, he, we will mount up with wings like an eagle. An eagle is a huge bird, a powerful bird. He, he will lift our heads above all of this chaos that we are seeing and witnessing. But waiting on God, wait on God. And he gives us an example of how he punished the whole nation of Israel for failing to repent and come back to him. And he wants us to live in union with him, but wait on him and his timing for everything. Everything. And listen here. And he tells us again in the Psalms 27 and 1 that listen. I want you to keep my commandments. I want you to live for me because I am your life. I am your salvation. And I will deliver you out of your adversity situation. But just wait on me. Trust God as we patiently wait for him. And I'm almost finished. And I, I, I want to encourage us all once again to do this. Have faith in God. Trust him and his timing and keep our focus on him doing as he say so we can walk the waters of life with complete confidence in the one true God. Remember Peter walking on water to meet Jesus till he took his eyes off of Jesus and he began to drown. But did Jesus let him drown? No, he didn't. He picked him up. He'll do the same thing for you. And the lesson there is, never take our eyes off of God. Keep our focus on him. Yes, we wait on him because he's sovereign and his timing is perfect. Listen, let me say this to the unbeliever this morning. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, do so today because tomorrow may be too late. Your sin, your heavenly bank account is marked paid because Jesus has already paid our sin debt. And all God the Father asks us to do is to accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior in faith, knowing that your sins will be forgiven. And to all who believe, your sins have been forgiven. And we are no longer out of balance with God, but have been reconciled back to God and have peace and harmony with God. We are no longer alienated from him, but we are in harmony with him. And we can do all of this by waiting and trusting in God. Let us, I'm going to close with this song. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Until I die, I am going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right until I die. 
I'm going to open the doors of the church. The servo, this is your cue. She had told me she didn't know what I was saying. She's going to be a part of this congregation. She's been a faithful and dutiful in coming. I have your name and information. I'll fill out your form. But just open up and tell the church what you feel. She's coming to us by Christian experience. Well, yeah. first I would like to start off with, I was seeking for a Bible-based church that is meaningful to anybody who's in need of the word. Mm -hmm. And pastor touched me by the substance of what she was reading from the Bible, not offhand. And you broke it down to me of how to dissect it for myself as well with understanding. Mm -hmm. And that's what pulled me to this church. And I felt ho at home, I felt comfortable that I'm in place of what, what God is calling me to do even more. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if anybody feels like that, but the way how I felt is like there's God assistance assisting you in life as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So therefore, yeah. that's why I chose this church. Mm -hmm. And you're, you can be personal, understanding, caring, and, you know, an, an air. I don't care how big the con congregation is. I don't care how small it is. You still take your time for lending air and prayer that we all need because nobody's not perfect. Because right. if, if, if God was here himself from the reed, we looked up to him, but don't turn against from you too, because you're working with God. Yes, I am. There's many people who turn against people within the church. And mm -hmm. from my personal views, I'm seeing more and more of that in this world that we're living in currently. And I'm not hearing, oh, pay this and pay that and pay this and pay that. That's what a lot of churches do. But it's for the people that you that I see you working for, Pastor. And okay. that took a liking from myself to you. Okay. And your church. Okay. Well, we've heard your testimony. Miss Kate, we are going to take uh, officially into this church. She like said she's been coming over a year. And I had that same feeling when that God told me, so that's your member. Uh, and I just waited on her. And when she explained to me last Sunday, I didn't know that was my time to say, I want to join this church. And like I said, I have your information. I'm going to complete the form and I'll email it to you and send it back. And we'll and we do give our certificate certificates of memberships, okay? So I, I, um, I need a, a second when I move that we accept us to serve into the church. We have a right hand of fellowship. We can just wave, open up your mics and say, welcome aboard to this church. I'm not a member, but welcome aboard. Okay. All right. Yeah, you won. You just don't know it yet. <laughs> 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 okay, Sister Servo. So. We're glad to have you. Like I said, she's been a help to me since she's been here. And I'll repeat this again. When she came in, she had a medical issue. And it just it was just like a spirit to spirit that's touching and we connected, you know. And she was right there with me uh last summer when we went up to Carver Camp. And she did all she could and made the contribution and got Donuts and things, and she was there and didn't didn't step, didn't take a back seat and trying to help serve while we were there doing our youth evangelism. And I'm I'm those things is, is very uh meaningful to me as a pastor, because we do need help. And I wish some of those other 
uh, who is a part of the church and come on and uh, pick up the mantle and get started. Okay, once again, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks so much for that. So um, let us have our closing prayer. We have a discussion. God, I thank you for your people. I thank you for sending us a member. You're still answering my prayer when you are sending members, when I asked you to grow you, to grow this church spiritually, numerically, and financially. As we have committed ourselves, we're going to stand on the truth of God's word. But that's what the church is supposed to be. We are not going to bow down to the world. We're going to bow to you in humble submission to you for who you are and your sovereignty and what you do in the lives of all of your people. And Father God, I just thank you for using me as your vessel to carry this branch of Zion as we preaching and teaching the truth of your word. And I thank you for opening my mind and then founding my head with the wisdom and knowledge so I can pass it on to the rest of it. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Let's have our closing song. God be with you. God be with you until we meet again. Amen. Okay, this is concludes today's worship service, and I'm praying.